Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Computer Science and Engineering Workshop. This is your host, Dick Hardeman. So recently I've been watching this um, video about JavaScript interview questions. And uh, apparently this was asked at an interview. So as you can see, it's a pretty basic web page. Uh, we just have a counter that we can click and increase. And then we have a button below to reset that counter back to zero. So this is what we're going to be doing today. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. So before we begin, what I did is I went ahead and built the basic structure of my HTML file. I also um, removed the built-in white space. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to have a div with the counter class. Inside of this, we're just going to have a header. And then I'm just going to type in counter is at and then we're going to use the break tag for a different line and then uh, we're just going to type zero as you can see it shows up right here on the left side of your screen now i'm using the live preview extension uh so every single time i press Control s uh, it should display okay so the next thing we're going to be doing is we're just going to style this counter box okay so what i want to do is let's see let's give it a width of 200 pixels um, and then let's center it margin zero actually no you know what we don't want it the we don't want the box to um, hug the top part of the web page so we're just gonna give it a margin of 50 pixels top and bottom and there we go it's centered now so and inside of this what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say text align center so what this will do is it won't just center the text but it will also just center all of our inline elements and since text is inline it works uh, you should note that text align center works on all types of inline elements so let's just keep going so let's give it a background color of no, let's just start with black so this is a feature of vs code that i really like which we want it to be rgba so what i can do is i can come here and then define the opacity of this and as you can see it is now only 50 percent visible i believe it's called um so the next thing that i want to do is i want to give it a padding of 20 pixels on each direction because um, i don't want the text or really any other elements um hugging the walls of the box so between these what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to create a button with the class of counter but and then uh, inside of this, what I want to do is actually, hold on, let me just do it real quick. Um, as soon as it opens, font awesome. So I'm going to be using a, a um, what's it called, um, an icon from font awesome for this one. It's really good. So let's go. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link this CSS file my HTML document here we're gonna be linking a CSS file here there we go so I will drop a link in the description below to font awesome uh, but yeah let's just get a plus sign for um, for our counter it should be this one I don't know what's I don't know what's going on with the internet it's a bit slow today but let's just keep going there we go now we can start using it what we're gonna do we're just gonna copy paste this in between here and then actually hold on this doesn't need to take three lines though that's a mistake on my part but we should be able to see it okay so I'm just gonna size this real quick so we can just write fast 10x I believe no, wait, was it fa? There we go. Okay, so we just made it larger. And below this, what I want to have is another button, which will have the class of reset. Control Z. Okay. And inside, it's just going to say reset. So now what I can do is, um, 
what I should do right now is to change the font because that font is hurting my eyes right now. So body, font, family, sans serif. And much better. Okay, so next, um, let's see. So which one should I go with first? Um, oh yeah, of course, before I forget, what I want to show you guys is there's this tool called Gradient CSS. It's really lovely. Uh, what it does is that it makes a gradient background. Uh, as you can see, a background like this, uh, the one that you you've seen in the beginning of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here and then paste this. So here you can actually you now adjust the colors and stuff. Um, as someone who has poor taste in it though I just decided to I mean as someone who has really poor taste with when it comes to colors I just decided to stick with you know good old blue but you can make it whatever you want so the next step I believe will be to um actually hold on we should probably add a break tag now we could have properly styled it but a break tag is much easier so that's what we're going with. So um, the next, what was it called, by the way? Um, oh, yes, counter button. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and style my counter button here. Uh, we don't want a background with it. We also don't want a border. So what we're going to do, I believe this was, um, was it blue or... Mm, I'm not sure what color this was exactly. You know what? We'll make it blue, it's fine. It's completely fine. Oh, and uh, before I forget, we want our buttons to have some, you know, space between them and the element before them. So, margin. Actually, well, let's just say 10 pixels in each direction. It shouldn't really matter, but yeah. Okay, so next. So, we're going to be styling the reset button was just reset or reset okay it's just reset it wasn't reset button my bad there so we want the font size to be um 25 pixels mm, maybe a bit larger let's go with 35 much better so what i want to do is i want to have a padding of 10 pixels bottom and top and then left and right we want to have 20 pixels much better um what else we want the background color to be um, actually you know what just um, I'm just gonna copy paste this color real quick uh, this lovely color we have there we go and uh, before I forget I just gotta <coughs> remove the border from it the built-in border just isn't the best and then I I want to color the text to be um, you know what let's just make it go all white the in color inside. Okay, so next I want to have a border radius of mm, 10 pixels, maybe? Yep, it looks good. So lastly, I want this to be a, a tad bit transparent um, because when we hover on top of it, we want the uh, the color to be a bit, how do you call it, um, a bit more, a bit darker, so that way it's Actually, we can actually see that we're hovering on top of it, but whatever. So RGBA, we also want this to be 0.5 as well. So what I want to do is come here and type reset, hover. Using the hover pseudo class, what we're going to do is we're just going to come here and then make them 100% visible instead of just, you know, 50%. There we go. Uh, and also, we should probably do the same thing here. Um, let's see. Counter button. Mm. Color. Let's see. Let's just let's just make it good old blue. Control C. Control V. Uh, except we don't want it to be just um, always this type of blue. What we want is when we hover on top of it, we want it to be. We don't want it to be transparent anymore. That's actually a good way to um, style your buttons and etc. Okay, so what... Oh, this is the... Wait, we're not doing the background, we're doing the color. My bad there. Okay. 
And since we're, oh, we kind of forgot, but it shouldn't really matter. Color. I'm just going to do the color of this. Oh, let's go ahead and do this. And there we go. We now have a page here. Uh, just a static HTML document, though. This is this is, has no JavaScript whatsoever. So that's actually what we're going to be doing today. So script type text slash JavaScript. Okay, so inside of this, the first thing that I want to have is a variable for our counter value. So I'm just going to type count. By default, we want it to be zero. So each time we press this button, this is the variable that's going to be increasing and to display this variable. I want to have a function called display counter. So what this is going to do after we give this an ID, of course, because we forgot it, but it's fine. It's going to have the ID of display. We can get rid of this placeholder text inside of it. So what I'm going to do is using the get element by ID method, um, we're just going to, you're going to see it real quick. Just let me tap it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to access the inner HTML of this H1 tag. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to replace it with, well, whatever this function will be giving it. So in our case, um, let's see, counter is at, and then break tag. And then at the end of the string, we're just going to add the count value. So to show you it works, I'm going to use the all note. Um, it's display counter. And as you can see, it displays it. So when we change this, you should see that this is also changing as well. Well, let's just go back to zero. Okay. So the next function that I want to have is increase. Um, what it's going to do is, well, I mean, every single time we increase it, it's going to increase the count by one. So count plus plus. And then we're going to call the display counter function here. And then we're going to come to our button, uh, our counter button, and type on click increase. And as you can see, it now works. So the last thing we're going to be coding now is the reset function. So let's go ahead and type it. So it's going to do one thing, but it's going to be doing it good. So every single time this function is called, it's going to assign the value of zero to our count variable. And then what's going to happen is that it's going to call the display counter function. And the counter will, well, reset, which means going back to zero. So let's type on click, reset. And as you can see, we increase it. And then when we press reset, though, it resets and goes back to zero. So this is it. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video or found it by any means um, educational, helpful, or informational at least, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. So uh, thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video. Stay safe.